So how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for having me because I'm actually here in your offices, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> which I love. And Thanks. there's clearly lots of creative things going on here, which yeah. is very fun. It's slowly coming together. Better than our last office, which was a three-bedroom apartment that was packed full of people and had no decorations whatsoever. Well, that's how all the best stories begin. <laughs> Certainly in startups, yeah. In startups, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So not only are you running a startup, but you're actually running a Bitcoin company. Mm -hmm. So how's that going? So far it's been really good. You know, we were the first Bitcoin company to kind of um, get a bank deal done in the US. We made it really easy for people just to convert dollars into and out of Bitcoin. We tried to make it uh, trusted and secure. So um, we have insurance on the Bitcoin that we're holding. And that must be interesting. Yeah. That's well, an interesting deal. How do you insure Bitcoin? Well, it was tough to explain it to people, but um, we actually have something called a cybercrime insurance policy. So what that... <laughs> <laughs> So it covers. I don't know why that's hilarious. It like sounds like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to me. Yeah, it sounds like a movie should yeah. be made around that, like a hacker movie or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it covers all kinds of like the things that we, the discussions we have sometimes are pretty intense about, um, you know, like Ukrainian hackers trying to break into our systems and how would how would we deal with um, coercion and like you know duress keywords and things like that. So it gets a little intense sometimes. But luckily we haven't had to use any of those. So what like. What is the weirdest thing you've had to deal with? Like, have you actually had to deal with these Ukrainian hackers? <laughs> um, I mean, yes. Like, there's people trying to steal Bitcoin all the time, all all over the world. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's a very attractive target, uh, and you know, all all financial services are. You know, so far we've had an amazing track record as a company. We're storing more Bitcoin than any other company in the world that we know of. Um, so we've invested a lot in security. We've actually we actually stored 98 percent of it entirely offline, and it's. Um, Distributed in geographic, geographically distributed in safe deposit boxes, and uh, we do something called uh, key splitting, which is like essentially we're splitting up the secret into a bunch of pieces, and to restore it um, would require those to be rejoined. Oh my gosh! You remember, you know, in the movies when like they have to launch the nuclear missiles and you have to put the key in at the same time. Yeah, it has to it, be. It's always like some kind of sort like of that. puzzle. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So we had to invent a lot of things around security to start to store Bitcoin securely. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, especially because you guys just launched a new exchange. We did. So how's that going? It's great. So it's been out about a month. Um, I think we're now the largest exchange in the US by volume and I think third largest in the world. That's what I heard. High five. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> like king of Bitcoin, it sounds like. Well, I wouldn't say that, but we're doing well. We're doing well. We're it's okay. To, I'll say it. I said it. It's we're fine. trying to remain humble here. I mean, this is a very new space. Yeah. Um, and we, we're trying to help Bitcoin overall grow, not just like, not for it to just be about Coinbase, but um, certainly having a stable exchange in the US that um, people can trust is going to be a great thing for the Bitcoin ecosystem. You know, um, I've interviewed a few people in the Bitcoin space, and when I interview them, I ask them to explain Bitcoin in one sentence. Do you think you can do that? Sure. OK, um, what is Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> so Bitcoin is a global decentralized digital currency. Nice. Now, I did it in one sentence, but you might have to ask, like, what does that even mean? Um, <laughs> So I mean, my favorite analogy to explain Bitcoin is email, right? So um, think about email. It works everywhere in the world, and you can send an email in a couple seconds. Um, it's free. The same thing, you know, that email has done for communication, Bitcoin is doing for money. Previously, um, you know, money was moved around by a series of proprietary payment methods in all, in different countries all over the world. So, you know, Visa is an example of that. The only company who can use the Visa network is Visa. There's also Western Union and all these systems in various countries. Money I have a visa. Do you have a visa? Sure. Yeah. yeah. They're in everyone's pocket, right? Right. Um, <laughs> but if you want, to, I think you know. So our goal is like Coinbase will be on every phone. You know, is their wallet. Right. I think the, the the wallet is moving from you know your pocket to the phone. That's like been a trend that's happening for a little while. Um, but any com the beauty of it is that any company can send money on the Bitcoin network. It's not just Coinbase. Now mm -hmm. let's talk about the wallet. Sure. So you're also a wallet. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for Bitcoin? Like how how does a Bitcoin wallet work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's a little. Does bit it look like a normal wallet? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's electronic. It's on your phone. So instead of carrying it, you know, in your back pocket with you know. Um, dollars or whatever. Yeah, let's these. see what's in your wallet. It's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got credit cards. I've got everything. An ID, yeah. normal stuff. All the normal. <laughs> um, but you know, instead of isn't paper money like? Doesn't it seem kind of archaic? It's oh like, yeah, I never have it. It's sort of. But then I find myself trapped in certain situations. Uh -huh. You know. 
Well, meaning what? They don't accept anything else? Yeah, on occasion, like parking garages yeah. or I don't know. Well, it makes sense because um, those have high fees, right? So there's actually a lot of places in San Francisco that don't want to accept credit cards. Um, there's restaurants, bars, taxi drivers. Um, the reason is like they are paying 2 or 3% for that, and they, that's why they always want cash, right? And so you know, Bitcoin is really like a digital form of cash. It's a peer-to-peer -peer payment, so there's no like intermediary in the middle charging them a fee. Is there yeah. more risk when you're sending money through Bitcoin? So there's not in, it depends, yeah, there's different kinds of risk, right? Yeah. So um, one of the things that merchants face are chargebacks. There's no chargeback risk in Bitcoin. It's it's like good funds, like the cash just arrives in, in Bitcoin. That sounds great. Just yeah. a package of cash? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. It just arrives. Yeah. But I mean, one, one thing that's that's more risky right now is that Bitcoin is still pretty volatile, the price of it, right? So, you know, if you do accept Bitcoin and the price goes up or down tomorrow, it could change 5%, 10% or more um, because it's still quite volatile. So I guess you are having that sort of risk. Bitcoin is such just it's like an unchartered territory. It's like the Wild West. It is. It really is. Yeah. You're, like, you're like a cowboy in the Wild West. Well, hopefully we're not all cowboys and Indians. I think we're, we're, you know, we have like a great compliance team. We have amazing legal counsel. We have amazing investors. So yeah, I, guess I think we're cowboys slowly. Cowboys didn't have legal counsel, I don't think. Probably not. I think I think we're moving. They need really good lawyers. We kind of have a foot in both worlds. We we're partly like you know, in the realm of stodgy old financial services, <laughs> like with bankers and things, and then we're also kind of partly a tech company doing hackathons and things like that. So why did you start this company? Well, um, I mean, I want to see payments become more efficient. I want to see, uh, there's billions of people in the world actually who don't have access to financial services as well, but they now increasingly have a smartphone. And so we think a lot of, you know, the traditional sort of bank business model doesn't actually work for those people. Um, because if you're, you know, living in a slum or something like that and you only have $20 to your name, um, it doesn't make sense to like deposit that in a bank. And then the, the bank makes money by loaning out deposits. So the business model doesn't work unless you have a substantial amount of money deposited with them. Whereas with Bitcoin, that doesn't matter. It's just a piece of software. Um, we can have that installed on you know, Android phones around the world, and it's very low cost service that we can provide. So, My only concern mm -hmm. with that would be like the people you're saying, someone who's living in a slum or mm -hmm. you know, in say Africa or somewhere else who doesn't have, um, you know, I know that like Bitcoin you can use in a lot of different countries as well. But um, my only concern with that is uh, do they know how to, will they be able to figure this out? Mm -hmm. Is it too complicated for them? Will people figure it out? Yes, actually, I think they will. So, you know, I think there's going to be kids who grow up in, in India or something like that, and they have a smartphone, and it turns out, you know, they have 100 bits on there, which is a tiny amount of Bitcoin, um, and they start to trade that with their friends, and they start to use it. It's like um, Pogs. Mm -hmm. But not. Yep, and they, there's going to be somewhere, <laughs> and like the local kiosk on their street corner where they can get cell phone credits, um, you know, but instead of having to like, you know, pay to do a cash economy or to, a lot of people in the developing world also SMS phone, cell phone minutes to each other as a form of digital currency, um, but it costs fees because the, tel the, the telcos there are charging fees for that. So this is suddenly like a way for them to have free payments um, anywhere in the world. I'm like the Valley Girl. I'm like Brian Armstrong from Coinbase. So let's see what's really in your wallet. Okay. Yeah. So you got some money. I got some money. Got some credit cards here. Yep. Some different some different places. What's this? Key card? Yeah, it's an access card. Has your card. name on it. Yep. That's exciting. This is a very like efficient wallet. I feel like yeah. my wallet is like way like has is taking up <laughs> way too much space. Yeah. Good job. Person. Let's figure out how to get some coffee with okay. Bitcoin. Okay.